So, let's start out with one of my very favorite Egyptian myths. And if you can't tell, I'm actually wearing Egyptian-inspired makeup in honor of this, because it's my in- favorite culture in the world, honestly. Um, so, let's begin. Isis and Osiris were actually siblings, surprisingly. Well, not for the ancient Egyptians. But they were the son and daughter of Nut and Geb, and together with their three other siblings were the reason, uh, according to the ancient Egyptians, that we have 365 days, not 360. So Isis uh, was the great royal wife of Cyrus the Pharaoh. Everything was going smoothly. This was actually considered the golden age in Egypt when actual gods ruled Egypt. Um, and it's also the reason why uh, Egyptians considered their pharaohs god kings. We'll get more on that later. So basically, everything's going smoothly. Everyone's happy, except for one of their brothers, Set. He got jealous, and he wanted a throne for himself. Only way to do that? Kill Osiris. So that's exactly what he did. So meet Set. He's he's not super cute. Um, and essentially, he was the god of deserts, of storms, of pretty much everything evil. Um, and so, obviously, you know, not a good guy. And he basically comes to his brother and he's like, hey, I love you. I want to throw you a birthday party. Osiris, you know, being kind of, he's kind of stupid, but trusting. And he's like, sure, let's do it. So Seth throws this birthday party and, you know, he pulls out all the stops. Well, he also brings a giant sarcophagus. And like, I'm talking like covered in gold, covered in jewels, handcrafted. So pretty much fit for a king. And that was the catch. It was made specifically for Osiris and no one else could fit in it. And Seth said, you know, hey, if you can fit in this, it's yours. Well, Obviously, Osiris was the only one who could fit in it, and that's where things started to go wrong. So basically, at this point, um, keep in mind that, like, Osiris was one of the last people to climb in the coffin, so everyone's like, oh, haha, like, obviously it's a gift for Osiris. Well, he climbs in, of course he fits, Set immediately slams the lid down. Now, in some versions of the myth, he, like, nailed the lid down with some nails, other versions, he sealed it with molten lead. Either way, Osiris couldn't get out. So Set then makes away with the body and the sarcophagus, throws it into the Nile, and basically calls it a job done. Well, well, Isis is like, I don't think so. So she ends up searching for her husband's body for years, possibly, and eventually finds the sarcophagus washed ashore. She starts taking it back home. Um, And she, you know, keep in mind that Isis is a goddess of magic, so she can absolutely resurrect people. Well... That things don't go according to plan, because Set shows up again, and this time, he's like, you're really not going to get him back. That ends up resealing Osiris' body, he cuts into 14 pieces, and he scatters it across the world. So, Isis starts hunting for those body parts, and she finds 13. The 14th was eaten by a fish, and it's said to this day that, you know, that fish species is cursed by Isis. So, there's some really interesting stories from her hunt across the world, which I'll share later, but essentially, she finds the 13 pieces, she puts them back together, she reanimates her husband, um, and an important part of the story is that Nepethes, uh, Set's sister wife, and Anubis, the son of Set and Nepethes, actually assists Isis in her search for Osiris, because they both hate Set as well. Um, and basically, um, Osiris reawakens, he ends up getting Isis pregnant with, um, it's kind of complicated, but Horus, who also happens to be their brother. It's pretty weird, actually. <laughs> so, meet Nepethes, um, goddess of death, but also goddess of the Nile. So, she was associated with both life and death. Um, and essentially, so, she helped Isis reanimate Osiris. Um, also, her son Anubis helped because he was the god of embalming. Um, so Osiris comes back to life, and of course he gets Isis pregnant with Horus. Um, that's a whole nother story with who Horus is to them. Um, but basically because they couldn't find the 14th piece of his body, he kind of comes back like a zombie, so hence the green skin. Um, so he's now sent to the Duat, which is like the Egyptian underworld or spirit world, whatever you want to call it. But he's sent there to rule as Pharaoh um, and guarding the afterlife. And so basically, that's the end of the Osiris and Isis saga, but there's a lot more to tell with Horus battling Set and all these other fun tales. So here we go.